Hey guys, uh, I know I just released a video for the Halo PSA implementation playlist. Um, if you're going through your self-implementation or do it yourself with Rising Tide, uh, with our support on the back end, that's what that video was for. But it's been a while since I've done an out-of-band video. Um, and there have been a few things that we've done, quite a few things that we've done that have made um, some significant changes to how we work in Halo. And I, I'm not going to go through all of them. I can't, uh, honestly, I don't remember what they all are. But I'm about to do another one. And I figured, why not record it while I do it live? This is an idea that I had while I was talking to my new team member, Ben. Um, and we were looking for a specific, there was a long project that was going on. We we're looking for a specific action that had a word listed in it. and Obviously, being who we are, we jumped straight to reporting, and we did. We just basically wrote the report. And the idea that came to me is like, why don't we make this a dashboard within the ticket, um, or custom fields in the ticket, or something like? There should be a way to search within a ticket that's easier and it pulls a specific action and it allows us to jump right to that action. And so this is something that I'm sure people who use Halo are aware. Halo searching, uh, it's it's not terrible, but it's not great. Um, and so this will give us a way to essentially augment the searching ability within Halo. So without further ado, we are going to jump into our production instance, our live instance for Rising Tide. This is going to be our YouTube demo area. It's been a while since we saw this. I've created a test ticket. Um, that test ticket is basically calling out specific keywords throughout the notes. And we want to be able to find out if we can get directly to the specific action. And it doesn't matter how long or how big the ticket is, you want to be able to basically have essentially some sort of tab here that'll allow us to jump straight into um, into the action that we're looking for based off the keyword search. Uh, so how do we do that exactly? Um, well, we started off with the report. Like I said, we jumped straight to the report writer. So uh, if we take this ticket number 2762 and we go to our, this tab here, we have a report basically written already. We're looking for where note like, and then we're going to be doing a contained search. So this has to be set using some sort of dynamic value that we can look for. And the fault ID is going to equal 2762 in this case, but we really would tie that back to a variable indicating the ticket that we were inside of at that time. And so if I were to come here and do a search for Hoodoo and then come to pre preview report, we should see who made that, the action number, the ticket number, and the specific note that exists. And we can take that and use the HTML version instead of the note version. Um, it's just the note version is plain text. It's easier to see on the report, but here's what the HTML version looks like of that. And we can go ahead and swap that out from Hoodoo to Roost or some other kind of keyword um, like domination for world domination, uh, which will bring us back to this note, this email back to remind you that we also have to discuss about world domination and Halo PSA. And I can even search for Android. And basically, as long as uh, Android, as long as a note contains that word, uh, we should be able to make it work, right? Without uh, a real problem. Now, what do we do with this result, right? This is not necessarily uh, helpful to us. We still want to prevent, provide some sort of dynamic interface to swap this in or out, like this word, the keyword search. And we also want to build um, a link back to this action. What if I want to do something with it? I want to copy something out of it. I want to edit it. I want to change the charge rate or, or time en entry or something like that. And so we want to be able to link direct, directly back to that action. So we're going to be doing a couple of things here. Um, we're going to be using custom fields and database lookups. And again, I, I have not done this before. I don't know if this will work. Uh, we are going to do it together live, and we're going to see how far we get. So. Um, I'm already planning like what we need to have here. We need basically a couple fields, uh, custom fields on the ticket. And so we need uh, the keyword search field, obviously. We need to know, uh, we need another field to display the results. Um, and we need uh, potentially like a search button to trigger, hey, I'm ready to do the lookup. Let's go ahead and, and search for that. Um, so we're going to go to configuration. We'll go to custom fields. And let's start talking about what we need to create. All of my custom fields are like using more or less uh, some form of camel case or you know first letter of every word capital, some sort of standard there. And then I also like specifying 
a prefix for what the field is going to be used for. So in this case, we're going to be doing uh, action search, and we need to, this is going to be the keyword lookup, right? So the keyword lookup is going to be a search keyword is a label. It's going to be a text field. We're going to input basically anything at this point, and we are going to go ahead and create a new tab for this, which we'll call um, action search, right? And we'll put sequence number one. And we'll put uh, two columns per field, maybe. Let's go ahead and save. And then we'll put this back onto the action search. And we'll save. All right, so I'm going to take the action search prefix, and we're going to create our new tab. And here we're going to say, once we have the keyword, we're going to have the results displayed. Right? The results that we're displaying is going to be um, Found action. This is going to be a rich text, um, right? Or results found, maybe. We'll do that. And there is a, that. That's going to be onto the same tab. That's going to be on the action search as well. And then we're potentially going to build another. Uh, this one is going to be found action number, right? And so this is going to be action ID. It's going to be the label. We're going to leave this as text. But we are going to make it uh, a URL. And so the hyperlink we're going to pass it to is going to be doing like something like uh, forward slash ticket. Um, let's see. There's a URL here that sh should work. Let me just see if I can find what I had in here. Um, yeah, it's forward slash ticket ID equals. And then I think this will work. I'm not sure. And um, action ID equals dollar value. Right, and so that way, when it gets populated with a value, it should take us to the ticket number of itself with the action ID of that value that we're populating. Right, and then we can go ahead and put this in the same tab as well, and we can go ahead and save this. So we've got three fields right now. We we want the final field, which is going to be the field for um, uh, submitting the search. Right. And I don't know if we could do this based off a checkbox or single selection. I think we do single selection. We'll do some radio buttons, actually. And it'll be a static list of uh, search or clear, right? And then that way, if we hit clear, it'll clear the results. If we hit search, it'll submit the, the, the results for us. With that being said, we're going to put this back onto the same tab. And we're going to go ahead and save. So now we basically have the custom fields we want to create. We'll go ahead and be able to find these all here, which is perfect. If we go to our custom objects and custom tabs, we may be able to see the action search that we created. Let's take a look here for a second. Yep, this is it. And we can see the type is for fields and number of field columns. Okay, so the actual ordering of the fields in the tab will happen on the ticket type itself. So let's start building that out as well. If we go to our tickets, ticket types, right now we're dealing with the support ticket type. Um, we really want to do is build a field group if we can. So let's build a field group here. A field group, we're going to call it it's going to be um, ticket action search. And we'll not put a group header. Maybe we'll put a group header here. Why not? Action search. Doesn't hurt. And then we'll start building our field list. This is not visible to end users on a new ticket or end user ticket detail screen. It's hidden if it's empty. It's not required for the action uh, visibility. It's not on the new ticket screen. And it's show on separate tab hidden if empty. And then we'll go to the field list and start throwing in our action search buttons. Ooh. All right, so the reason why I use that prefix is because I keep it in my clipboard, and then I can just quickly add all the fields relevant by pasting over and over again. And then I can come here and make my changes. So submit search is going to be um, above. Here's the search keyword. Submit search is going to be together. Action ID and results found are going to be together as well on a separate tab. And we do want to save this first. And then we want to start modifying some of these fields, right? So we're going to field list results found. We actually want that to be read only. So action uh, um, ticket details screen, we want this to be read only. The way we're going to do that is by restricting modify access based on role. And so now nobody can update it. Um, so it'll be read only. It's not going to be on an action, so we don't care. And then same thing with the action ID. We're going to come back and do this later, because I want to test it out first. Um, Keyword and submit search is going to be editable, and uh, submit search will be um, will be editable as well. So we're going to go ahead and save this, and 
I'm literally thinking as I do this, so I don't really know. Again, we're planning this out as I go. It's building it for the first time. We're going to see how this works. Let's go ahead and go to our support ticket type, and we are going to add the field list of that field group we just created. Group of fields is going to be the action search, ticket action search, and we're going to go ahead and save that. And so now we've got our four things added here. We're going to go ahead and save this. If I go to uh, my ticket and I refresh, we should now have an action search tab um, I don't know why it's not showing up. <laughs> Good job, Mendy. So what happens if you do things live? Uh, is, did I break something? No, it's not broken there. Ticket action search. Did I mark it hidden if uh, empty? Did I do that? Oh, yeah, I did. That's not going to work. Let's uncheck that and save. Okay, and so then we'll refresh this and see if that brings it back. I may have to go field by field. No, nope, there it is, perfect. All right, so we've got our keyword, we've got our submit search, we've got our action ID, and we've got our results found, which we can't edit. And so the question is, first of all, does the action ID actually work? We don't know if the fault ID works or if that URL is going to work. And second of all, like this submit search, I would rather it be side by side instead of up and down, potentially. Um, so that's up to you. If we go to the custom field, we can just go into that, Submit search, and we can change this to say is horizontal instead of vertical. And then if I go back to this ticket and refresh, I mean, it's up to you and how you want this to look, right? It's your design, um, so to speak. And so now we've got these two instead of uh, that. So let's test our action ID first. I'm just going to go ahead and populate with a one. It's going to update that, and then that one's going to become a link. And that link should take me to uh, ticket ID equals dollar fault ID and action ID. Okay, so the dollar fault ID did not work. The variable did not come across. Um, and I don't know why not. It may be that you can't use a variable in this field, um, or it could be that the variable is something other than uh, other than what I thought it was. So it may be ticket ID instead of action ID, or it may just be ID or something like that. I don't know. Let's find out if we can refresh this. All right, an action search. One is now, nope, it's ticket ID and it hasn't expanded. So that's something we'll come back to. Um, that's just one of the things that we were thinking of potentially doing, uh, but we could um, we could do something. We have other options if this doesn't work for us, which is fine. Like the key is whether or not the search itself will work. So now we have to talk about the search. Um, what we wanna do is we basically wanna find for the keyword, uh, and populate the results. We've got this report here, basically, and we want to grab the node HTML. So first of all, notice here I'm selecting star. That's not really going to work for me. I'm going to collect these fields specifically, and I'm just going to replace the star with these fields, and I'm going to put commas at the end of each one. And so we should basically find that even without these fields now limited, we basically get the same exact data back. We have the same report, same information. So I'm going to come back here and take that. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to go to database lookup tables, and we're going to create a new database lookup. Sorry, not a database lookup table, database lookups, and create a new one here. I've got a ton here already. I'm going to go ahead and create a new one, which we're going to call action search or search actions for keyword. All right, and then um, we're going to put this under tickets. Population of custom fields is going to be what it's used for, and it's going to trigger when a field value changes. And that field value is going to be the action search uh search submit right and so upon the search submit being changed it's going to go ahead and specify that um we are going to also include the uh keyword right and so we need that keyword in there as well um search keyword now um Yeah, like I said, I'm building this out as we go. We're going to do it in pieces, and I'm going to come back and deal with other challenges that I'm thinking of as I do this video. <laughs> I don't know how it's going to look. I don't know how it's going to uh, behave, but we'll we'll see. Uh, so we're going to come here and paste in our SQL. Uh, we're going to replace the fault ID with ticket ID instead. And then our Android is going to be replaced with um, the CF search keyword, right? And so we'll come in here and we'll do $CF search keyword lookup percent percent. And let's see if this works. 
If that, at this point, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to populate based off of the node HTML. I'm going to populate the um, results found, right? And then I'm also going to populate the uh, action ID found based off the uh, action number, I believe. All right, so if you scroll up a little bit here, action number is what I'm using to go into that result. And then fault ID is not being used, node HTML is not being used, but I'm using note to search for that keyword because I don't want to search all that HTML. Uh, chances are I'm not going to find it correctly. I want the plain text version to be searched specifically. Um, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and hit save on here. So this should be active at this point, um, which means if I go to my test ticket and I don't even really need to refresh and come in here and search for the word hoodoo and then I can come here and hit search then what should happen okay I'm lying maybe I do need to refresh let's refresh that and go to action search all right submit search not found search keyword not found so what is it doing in here um, let's go back to our table. Um, yes, yeah, this is what I'm looking for. Okay, I don't know why I just froze for a second. <laughs> this is I lost my train of thought. This is the this is what we're looking for. Let's go ahead and test this. We're testing this with the keyword of hoodoo and the submit search would be set to search and save and save. Uh, test succeeded value not found. Why did it not find that value? Um, let's do the following. Let's pull all this out for a second. And I'm just going to do select. Results like that or we can just do action, notice HTML, and see if it populates that, and then we can do one as action number, right? And save this. And so theoretically speaking, if we test this and we set this to be hoodoo, save, and set this to be search, save, and save. Uh, okay, so it's not finding, mm -hmm. Um, I wonder if it's because let's just do this without the quotations. Is the quotations messing it up because it's expecting it to be, um, let's try this again. Cause it's a string. Let's see. Nope. Oh, duh. I'm missing a comma. Hold on. That was done. Okay. Let's try this again. Let's put this in and let's test this. Uh, time, hoodoo, and then search. Okay, value found, action do one, and results found is hoodoo, All right? So that's gonna be how that works. But if I come back here and I replace this backed with what we had before, and we do string, and I the key is like, I wanna know if the string is going to work correctly or if it's gonna cause a problem because I'm basically not putting a space between the parentheses and the dollar symbol, and I don't know if it's gonna find the right results or what's going to happen or how it's going to expand. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Um, yeah, and so as you can see, it found the value, but it's not expanding it because of the fact that it's uh, that it's one um, thing. I wonder if we can do something like uh, concat, uh, concat, and then we can do uh, um, and then this, and then this, like that, potentially. And is this gonna work? Let's find out. We do save, search, save, save. And there we go, that looks like it's working. So now we can come back here and look, we can put back our uh, SQL. We're gonna grab this concat statement that I made to make this work and we're gonna delete this 
and put this in its place. We're note like, and then we're then going to concat the two together like that. Um, right, and fault ID equals ticket ID. So now if I come in here and save this, if I come back here and just change this option right now, uh, there we go, this note contains sort of hoodoo. Search, right? And so I haven't really finished this part yet. We'll come back and deal with that later. The action ID itself is being changed to three, right? And so that'll link to that action ID at some point. Um, we'll we'll talk about that. Um, the search keyword that we have here is hoodoo. If I switch, switch this to like Android um, or something like we should be able to find essentially, uh, why is it not? Hmm. What if I switch it to roost? Um. Hmm. Come back here. What did I do? I guess it's not refreshing the value correctly. Let's refresh this for a second and come back here. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. I wonder if it's because it's caching the value when it's doing the lookup. Um, so that's interesting. What if we do, what if we put this back to like uh, Android at this point and do a lookup? Yeah, it's literally caching the results. Okay. Um, it's because the API because the because the API is queried for all the data at the time of the ticket load, and so therefore the load, the the cache hasn't refreshed, um, and so it's doing a search with the previous value of the field, unless we refresh the field. Um, what if we? Uh, where's our database lookup table here? They're both required, so it's not like it's even forgetting that. Um, what if we pull this out for a second? What if we don't do the submit search and just remove this and hit save? And then come back here, because this is supposed to be like real time stuff. And I come here and do like Outlook. I mean, that's going to be the same the same thing. What if I do Hoodoo at this point? OK. What if I do Roost? OK. Well, maybe the issue, maybe we just we just forget the submit search and clear search, and we just use the search keyword. Um, and the re results found at this point. Um, I think that makes the most sense given what we're seeing here. And if we go ahead and clear it out, we should be, um, I, I mean, I, ideally there'd be a way to clear the results, right? Uh, so that could be the tricky part. Um, but aside from that, like we can come in here and search any part of these actions to say, um, you know, if we search for QuickBooks, for example, we can come back here and search QuickBooks. And it should, I clicked off of it, come back here. Let's, there we go. It did find it correctly. Um, and so that is something that, that is already helpful uh, to an extent that we could use potentially. Um, but let's go, let's clear some of these, some of these things out then at this point. Um, we can go to our, uh, custom ticket types. We can just edit our field group and we're just going to change our field list to remove the submit search button. And so now we've got search keyword, action ID, and results found. So we can go ahead and save this and save that. And if we go back and we look at our YouTube ticket now and refresh this, our, because we're on two columns, so therefore search keyword and action ID should be up here. And results found are over here. And now I can come in here and I can make a change to like roost or something else and it'll find the specific action for it. Um, yeah, so I mean, I guess in the end, I didn't even really need to make a dashboard. I didn't make a, I didn't need to make a report. I'm using database lookups. I use custom fields. Um, there are some things that we want to change potentially. And I'm thinking like, as I do this, that we may even want to drop this field here and instead build HTML 
like in a template to populate um because we can concatenate kind of like what we did earlier um you know the two things so we can literally build an html document let's see if we can make this work really quickly because we've got um you know we've got all these fields that we're pulling in uh including who was and we can come in here and we can say um let's do this let's put this in here let's call this a for a minute and then come here and do select um and see if we do uh concat and then HTML. So the hard part's gonna be like, we need to escape everything. But if we were to do like, let's just skip that for a moment and just jump straight to the body. So if we do H1 and say something, let's do H3 and say something like, you know, who it was that did it. And so we can say A dot who, and then close uh, H3, or we can even say uh, who was, and then we can create a R H R E F equals and then the link, uh, um, let's do this, let's do act outcome. I think that's the thing for it. So the URL is gonna go to uh, tickets, right? Tickets, not tickets, question ID equals, and then we're gonna throw in the fault ID, and then we're gonna do another concat, and 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 action ID equals and then throw in the action number and then we'll continue. Um, that's the URL, right? And then we can close off uh, close off href at this point, which will allow us to close that tag and then. This is very uh, hard to digest. <laughs> it's not complicated, it's just very difficult to digest um, as I'm doing this. And so now I'm gonna be doing like another concat here at this point. And then like, as we're concatenating this huge long HTML string just around um, this thing. And so now we wanna put in the act outcome, right? That's gonna be the text of that link. And then we're gonna put the rest of the A tag in at this point. Um, we can close off the H3. We can throw a line across HR and then like a horizontal line across at this point. And then we can just put in the um, note HTML, All right? So this would be a dot note HTML. This would be uh, a dot action number. This will be a dot outcome. Um, yeah, uh, so here we've got the who did the action, what the action outcome was, and then that action outcome will link to the actual user. We've got, we're using the fault ID variable, um, which we need to specify a dot fault ID there. And then we have a dot action number, a dot act outcome. Okay, and then we have the rest of the body of the message, which wraps up our concat string that we need, All right? And so we can put this and say, this entire thing is gonna be called HTML doc, and we're going to say from. So now we're doing, this is this is really messy, but let's see how this works. And now all we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to trash this, we don't need this anymore, and we're just going to take this and say our HTML doc is going to be populated in the results found, right? And so um, HTML doc, yeah, maybe we do leave the action number in there because, well, it's hard to see it at this point. Um, we'd have to do something like a dot action number, right? And then we can take this and put this back in here. Just in case we need to like manually find it or something like that, let's go ahead and save this. And if we go back to our ticket and just refresh this tab and go to our action search, um, we should be able to change this to something like kudu and then get uh, a failure occurred, did not even, find it. I guess there was an error in the SQL. Um, so that, that makes sense. Let's go search and find out what that error was. Uh, that was very difficult. And so it's possible that um, 
Very likely. HTLM. Yeah, OK, that's great. Let's come back here. HTML. Save that. OK. And let's go back to our ticket and refresh. Action search. QuickBooks off. There we go. Look at that. My degree and did an email user. This is an email that talks about QuickBooks. And if I click on the email user, it should take me directly to that action from that ticket. All right, so I can go ahead and do that. So that's it. That's actually really cool. Um, that was less complicated than I thought it would be. Um, and again, like this is completely open HTML. You can essentially build whatever document you want to make it look however you want at this point. Um, we can center the Mendy Green email user. We can add a time, time taken, or other kinds of things that we want to know about this result that was found that allow us to then quickly find what it is we're looking for. So with that being said, um, that's the end of the video. Uh, half an hour, it's not so bad <laughs> compared to the one from last night. Um, and it kind of gives you an idea of like some of the capabilities. When we say that you can do whatever you want inside of Halo, sure, it's not pretty, but this isn't a half an hour thing that I did from scratch without like barely any thought into it. We can absolutely do stuff beyond what we see here, um, you know, to to uh, make it prettier or or whatever, make it more streamlined. But the idea is like just because Halo can't do it out of the box doesn't mean we can't make it do it. Um, and it's really not that complicated. Thanks for watching. I hope this was interesting and informative. Subscribe and like and leave your comments below.